giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We'll skip down to the 15th ranked team and talk about 2478. From Mesa, Arizona, and high school, it's Westwood Robotics, an overall record of 16 and 0 for the winners of the Arizona North Regional. So I believe it's the first appearance for the top 25. I'm not sure 100% for 2478. So congrats and welcome. That's the case. They have a really solid Sandstorm game and have a quick robot that can cycle game pieces very quickly and effectively. Um, ranking second behind 118, they would be selected by the Robonauts and not look back after that. Um, finals match one on the Blue Alliance um, is really cool. Um, as at the end, as um, at the end game, the camera stays kind of in the red end just for like the rest, and you can really watch these two drivers on twenty four seventy eight. They're just like so calm, so collected. Um, doesn't look like they really even talk to each other very much. They just know like exactly what they're doing, um, and you know what you know. It's just it was just really cool to watch, and um, so they just have a really strong robot this year. Um, from Westwood, um, the Arizona North Regional is up uh, is up next for them, uh, where they should come out and do really strong from the get go. So, uh, nice work to them, and congrats to Westwood Robotics twenty four seventy eight. Very good. Yeah, it was cool just kind of watching them. You know, they have the dual the dual joysticks, kind of like old school, like when I was a driver. That's what we had, and uh, it's just cool to kind of sometimes like look look aside and kind of just see what else is going on so the dual joysticks or single dual joysticks. okay good yeah. i don't i don't get teams who use a single joystick that yeah. blows my mind honestly yeah i think it's well it's with all like these new games and xboxes like i think they're more used to it than how do you game systems these kids are using? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 but i'm saying i see teams that still use like the one flight stick I, oh, I get yeah. like a oh, PS2, okay. PS2 or like Xbox oh, controller. Okay. okay. PS2, mm -hmm. I just dated myself there, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but using like a DualShock controller or a uh, Xbox controller yeah. totally makes yeah, sense yeah. to me. Uh, arcade steering to me is the way to go for any type of tank drive. But uh, if worse comes to worse, use two joysticks. I 100% I do not understand teams who use the like, um, they use one joystick and then the rotate feature on it. And I'm like, man, it's like 1997 going on here, you know? <laughs> I think most of the time I see that single joystick, though, it's because they have, like, mechanism wheels or something. And still, they just kind of, like, left, yeah. right, straight yeah, back, but, turn. Yeah, but you can still run an arcade drive that way. Oh, yeah, way totally could, yeah. Meh. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, somebody told me that one time about, like, a show that you just watch all the time. Like, for me, it's Seinfeld in the office. Yeah. So, like, when you know what's going to be said, like, look at other characters, like, see, like, what other people are doing when you're normally focused on, like, what's going on. Right. And that's what I, like, try to do nowadays. So that was, like, kind of the point of that is, like, just, you know, yeah, like, look. And I'm excited to kind of see these first-person point of views um, from 971 and 254 that we're going to show later. But same kind of thing, yeah. Just kind of step back and look at the bigger picture sometimes. It's, it's cool what you what you pick up. How do you guys feel about using the uh, N64 controller says as a top? Dude, I would be that's all that's all we had growing up. With like the C N64. button using like the C yeah. button so like trying to <laughs> on the top, through. yeah. The Z button on the back. Yeah. Yes, trying to play yes. Goldeneye that way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Goldeneye was a great game. Oof. Yeah. No, oh, now man. on retro FRC top twenty five. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. We should do that over the summer. We, we should do a retro out. game Ooh. game night. That'd be fun. Ooh, yeah, it would be like fun. That. It'd be a lot of fun. Me and Mike can play Blades of Steel. <laughs> My first but, hockey game on Nintendo. Oh really? Oh, yeah. be, oh nice. Nice. Ching Blades <laughs> of <Nintendo>? Steel. <laughs> Blades of Steel is a great game and encourage anybody says oh, I'd play awesome it. Right, I play I'd play it right the, now. The fighting mechanic in it? Oh yeah. <laughs> I was a big okay, oh. uh, real quick aside, I was a big fan on PS two of the uh NHL hits. You ever play that? Yeah. Like oh, that, somebody that was just like, your boy there, just said. Eric just yeah, yeah, NHL hits. hits. Well, that's because Eric and I used to play that in high school together. So. <laughs> yeah. That was like one of the best games seriously ever made. That's yeah. Dude, so, Justin, honestly, I've never heard of Blades of Steel as the game. Well, what system was it for? The original NES, Nintendo. Okay. Because there's a there's a hockey team at Bill Gray's that's Blades of Steel, I guess. Oh, yeah? I, I never knew where that came from. So. Yeah, did you get into a fight with someone? The winner of the fight would get the puck and like, keep playing, and the loser would get dragged to the penalty <laughs> box. It was fantastic. <laughs> You'd win the fight for a breakaway. It was awesome. <laughs> Dude, that's What that's a great amazing. game. That is so funny. That's awesome. Cool. All right. All right. So thank you for that sidebar. That's nothing that unusual. Sidebar, for the... <laughs> oh, he pulled it up. Look at it. Yeah, take a look, look familiar, Justin? It does. Look at that. Ah, that's those so are, great. Those are some amazing graphics right there. I think it was a fight, actually, it was a fight scene, I think. Bad. Yeah, look at this. Power. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, oh. Watch what happens. Watch what this is the best part. So so blue got knocked <laughs> out. Blue gets knocked down. Orange plays on. It's fantastic. <laughs> The tricky yes. part was if you were playing single player, you'd have to be, you have to play as the goalie at the same time. Like you were the player, the skater, and the goalie. So like you try to play defense, then you have to give up and focus on your goalie. It was just such a fun oh, game. How would you do that? Different. It wasn't easy. <laughs> different buttons. Two player was a little bit easier. Mm. Oh wow, dude, that's funny. That's great. Uh, I gotta buy that game now. There you go. <laughs> yeah. They have those classic. Yeah, the classic thing now is back out. Yeah. Good All stuff. right. So where were we? Yeah. All right. 14. So, 14. That's going to be team number 1305. From North Bay, Ontario, Canada, probably where they play a lot of Blades of Steel. It's Ice Cube, 17 and 2 overall. We're the winners of the Georgian College District event. So, sporting a very fast climb and a solid robot overall, 1305 was able to take the number one spot at their event this weekend. They teamed up with Waffles, 4476, and 781, the Kinetic Knights. Uh, and stands from their way to victory. Dropping match one in the finals, they won match two by just one point, uh, forcing the rubber match where they were able to secure a comfortable win in match three by 10 points. So a great start to their season. You can catch them again next week at North Bay. Mike's <laughs> the, ro- the robot was so cool on the reveal. It, yeah, it was awesome. And yeah. it looks just, it just as cool on the field. It was really good. Hashtag Team Turret. Team Turret. Cool. <clears throat> All right, so moving to 13th, we're going to go from Canada to Texas and talk about 624. From Katy, Texas and Cinco Ranch High School, it's Kryptonite. They have an overall record of 29-8-1, and they were the winners of the Austin and the Channel View District events in FIT. So they're a con- we need to come up with something for fit. Um, it's not good. <laughs> no. So with their iconic green LEDs, Kryptonite took the field this past weekend after their uh, win in week one in Austin. They ranked seventh and were selected to the number two alliance um, where they took the win. And this past weekend, they were ranked fifth and was also, again, selected to the number two alliance. Um, familiar territory for them as they excuse me, would take the win against the number four alliance in the finals and where they beat number five in the finals at Austin. So it's just really similar. So they're two for two this win uh, for district or this year in district wins, and they'll compete again this weekend uh, at the Colorado Regional uh, before heading back into districts in Texas for the district championship. So uh, congrats and good luck to 624 Kryptonite. And that was a uh, when we were just talking about that a, a couple minutes ago. Um, I was thought about the Texas teams that have been jumping out this year too, mm-hmm. and competing up in Arizona and here in Colorado and stuff. So so they like you know so they're. With a district that's brand new, um, they're still, you know, I don't think they're ready to kind of give up, you know, the regional. So, um, so again, that was 624 in 13th. One of my favorite teams of all time. I love 624. Mm-hmm. All right. So moving on to number 12, that's going to be team number 16. From Mountain Home, Arkansas, Mountain Home High School, it's Hall of Fame Bomb Squad, 22-7 and seven overall, and we're the finalists at the Rocket City Regional. So I don't know if you guys had a chance to watch any of the, the uh, match videos from Rocket City. What a beautiful venue it took place in. They had the field lit up. It was just an yeah, awesome, awesome thing to watch. Uh, so 16 competed for the second time this year, looking to improve on their semifinalist outing at their first event at Rocket City. They did secure the number one spot and led the number one alliance all the way to the finals. After dropping match one, however, things really took a turn for the worse in match two, unfortunately. The Alliance struggled out of the gate in Sandstorm and could not recover. Uh, take nothing away from the 16th Swerve Machine. It's a great robot when it's running, but they certainly ran into some issues there in the finals, um, which probably kept them um, from winning. But it is a great machine when it's running, and they're certainly uh, not done, and they'll be ready to go for the World Championship in Houston. I wonder if you guys got a chance to see that. It was like... It was like watching a car crash in slow motion. It's like, ooh, this is not going good. 16 really had some issues there, yeah, but it is, a great, finals, it is a great robot. Finals two match for them. They barely even moved the entire match. I know. Like I, felt, I felt so bad. Well, you know, and the interesting thing with 16, if you look at, um, I think somebody that speaks to that is their ELO is ranked 11, right? And you look at yeah. where they were a couple weeks ago at Midwest Regional, or last week, right, at Midwest Regional, and they were on the semis both times because of things breaking down. When that bot, it reminds me of kind of like 1690, right? When those bots are operational, yeah. they are just stellar, spot on, some of the best robots in the world. Uh, just got to work on some of that robustness, it seems. And uh, if they can get those down, uh, you know, teams like 16 and 1690 and stuff are, are just going to be absolutely incredible mm-hmm. and darn near unstoppable at some point. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right, so one more team to talk about here before the top 10, and that's team 5406. From Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, and Bishop Ryan Catholic Secondary School at Celtex. With an overall record of 17-1, and one, they were the winners of the Ryerson District event. So starting out their fifth season, 
Um, Celtics hit the ground running at Ryerson, going 11 and one with a ranking score average of 2.91. They would pick legendary team 188 and go on to win the event in six matches. For a relatively young team, Celtics has really just been consistent um, and just year in and year out is doing very well up in Ontario, um, where as we all know, the competition up there is very deep um, and very tough. So um, another great robot, another great start this year for 5406. They'll compete again um, in the district. Uh, at McMa- at the McMaster District event, excuse me, um, in early April. So they got a couple weeks off here where they'll be competing uh, with some other big names in Ontario. So look forward to seeing them again. Uh, good luck and congratulations once again for uh, making the top 25 and, and making it here at number 11. Just really, really well done to 5406 Celtics. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.